Hey, what's going on, guys? Another cool little knife brought to you by me, Terribly Tactical. We're at the tabletop. Well, at least it's cool to me. I don't know if it's going to be cool to you. Uh, some of you guys might be into the super high-speed tactical knives, and or it's fixed blade only, or it's this, that, and the other thing. But I don't know. I, I like all that stuff. I love all that stuff. Anything with an edge, you know? Um, but at the same time, I do have quite an affinity for the older style knives, the classic knives, the slip joints, you know, stuff like that, the trappers, all, all the old school, classic Americana, you know, your grandpa and his grandpa had one in his pocket, just a working man's knife, something that's always there. It's always, you know, fumbling around right next to the keys and the lighter and everything else. And you carry it every day and it gets the job done. And today what we're looking at is the Buck 310 Limited Edition Whittler. It is a slip joint. And we'll give you a couple close-up shots over here. Really, really nice, classy-looking knife. I really like that a lot. You see the emblem right there? If it'll focus. Yeah, Buck Limited Edition. There we go. We'll bust this bad boy open. It is a nail nick or nail mick. I don't know exactly how it's said. I think it's nick, but who knows. That's your main blade, traditional blade. You see on the, uh, the blade there, Buck 310 USA. All the blades on this knife are really sharp. It has been used a little bit and definitely carried a little bit. There is a nice sheep's foot, some kind of tape residue or something on there. It's a really nice box cutting blade. It's a nice sheep's foot like that. Um, and then we have just the smaller pen blade. So three blades total. And they're all non-locking blades. You know, they do have the strong detent that kind of holds them in place. You see it'll spring back. Um, but they are not locking. So you definitely can get injured if you're not watching what you're doing. Um, had this for a while now. Like I said, it's been in and out of the carry rotation Sometimes I even forget about it when I'm doing EDC video, uh, EDC videos because I've definitely carried it. You know, it's so small. Sometimes it's just right in the little coin pocket of your jeans, and uh, I forget about it. It's so small, so lightweight. Um, basically, a 309, a buck 309 with the added sheep's foot blade. So if you guys are familiar with buck knives at all, uh, that's what it is. It's got an individual back spring for each of the blades, which is kind of cool. There is no brass liners in between each of them, though, but I haven't had any problems with grit or anything. Very smooth opening and closing. You can kind of see that there for each individual blade. And primarily, what you're usually going to be worried about, you know, with, with something like this is your main blade. And the cutting edge on that is an inch or one and seven eighths of an inch. Um, for the main blade cutting edge and that's definitely more than enough to you know cut food with to open boxes with to you know cut a string off your shirt do whatever it's definitely not a tactical knife it's definitely not a fighting knife um if i if this was the only knife in my pocket and i had to survive with it i would i do like the availability of the different blade shapes and sizes on here and the fact that you get more than one blade means you can designate one blade for this certain task you know this one's for box opening so that one's probably going to get more dull quicker um the other ones you know for whatever just general utility one i open my mail with or you know whatever it may be or you just use one all the time keep sharpening it you know keep an edge on it and uh you know you know no matter what you have two fresh or one fresh brand new untouched edges that you can use to work with you know i just like these old school knives you know whether it be buck or case uh, a little bit more fond of the case myself just because of the the multitude of variety that you can get from them but these things i mean they're no slouch either they're definitely classic knives i mean buck is definitely been around it's it's every bit of americana as cases you know and they're they're just sweet knives and again this is a limited edition from buck now the only thing is i don't know too much about this knife you know i've had it for a long time i can't remember if it was given to me or i bought it or i might have even found it i, I tend to find knives when i'm fishing all the time but I've had it for a couple of years now, and I just don't know too much about it. 
And I'm not super big into the buck knives. You know, I've had some. I still have some. This is one of them, obviously. And I've used them, and I've never had any problems with them. But, you know, the ones you buy at Walmart are kind of like their budget brand. And, you know, to get a really nice one, you know, you got to go to Bass Pro or somewhere else online. And they do have a lot of cool stuff. But I'm not re I don't really follow them like I would, you know, a Rick Hinderer, or Chris Reeves, Sabenza, Emerson, Spiderco, Benchmade, or Case, you know. And I don't know if there's anyone out there that, that does follow them like that or does have some more information because I'd like to know more about it. You know, what steel are the blades made with? You know, is it something nicer because it's a limited edition or is it more of like the same old just regular stainless that you'd find in a case or a Victorinox or something like that? You know, which it appears to be, you know, just the standard type, which I'd still like to know what that is. Is that 440C? You know, what is it? But I don't know, guys. I mean, what what is the limited edition commemorating? You know, is it just the, you know, this design? You know, is it 50 years, you know, 75 years, 25 years? Is it limited edition because of the way it's put together? You know, the added, you know, sheep's foot blade. Is it limited edition because of the materials it's made out of? It appears to be brass with the bolsters. And uh, this looks like some kind of bone or stag. Uh, but then it also could be some wood. You know, you, you never know. But it's I like the way it's textured. It's a great looking knife, a classy knife. You know, the, this design never goes out of style. It's very useful. It's super pocket friendly. And uh, I really dig these kind of knives. Now, obviously, you know, the, the role that the, those knives play for me, they're definitely, you know, working knives as far as, you know, I'm going to carry it to cut boxes or, you know, whatever I need to do with a blade throughout my day that doesn't need to be super quick, fast and in a hurry. And also is not, you know, a defensive tactical type of thing. So usually, you know, I'll have a couple knives on me. And this is really easy to keep on you. It's super small, super lightweight, you know, really pocket friendly and very utilitarian. You got the three blades that you can designate, like I said, to whatever tasks you want. Use them all. Only use one, only use two, whatever it is, and get the job done. You know, they're very easy to sharpen. They take a really nice edge, and again, I would really like to know what steel they're made out of, but something this small, if you're in a non-permissive environment like I've spoken to before on the case knives video, you know, this is, everyone recognizes this as just a pocket knife. It's not something, you know, big, black, and tactical that's so scary and, you know, just flies out of the handle. You know, it's not an automatic, it's not a switchblade, it's not spring-assisted, and it doesn't even lock. So, and it's grandpa's knife, you know, everybody, that's my dad's knife, that's my grandpa's knife, you know, everyone's seen one, everyone's either had one or knows somebody that's had one, something like this, and it's just, it's American, you know, everybody walks around, or at least they used to, they still should, but for a damn sure fact, they used to, you know, a man's man would have a knife like this in his pocket, and he'd bust it out whenever there was cutting to do. And uh, that's I, kind of, I love the tradition, and that's why I carry these knives, e even though we have Spyderco and Benchmade and, you know, Rick Hinderer and Emerson and all these high-speed tactical, you know, well-constructed custom knives, you know, well-constructed production knives, you know, as far as Spyderco, Benchmade, stuff like that. But I really dig these, you know, they, it brings you back. And I'm not that old. I grew up with knives like this, though, still. You know, being in the Boy Scouts and just being around it and, you know, grandpa and my dad, you know, all that stuff. So it's just, it's just nostalgic, even though, you know, I didn't really grow up in the prime time of when these knives were valid, which they're not to say that. I don't mean to say that they're, you know, they're just as valid as they ever were, but more popular, I should say, especially with, you know, people my age, maybe a little younger, maybe a little older, but, uh definitely love these kind of knives but i want to know more i want to know more why is this a limited edition what makes this a limited edition buck is it the materials is it the blades is it what is it commemorating you know is there something big that happened is this worth anything you know i'd probably never sell it because it's a great little knife super useful but does anybody anybody out there even buck themselves if you guys are listening or watching which i doubt it but uh, does anybody have any idea 
what this is. Why is it so limited edition? And if it is that limited edition, how many, you know, how many knives did they produce in this run? Is it one of a hundred? Is it one of a thousand? Were there 10,000? You know, what, what do I have here, guys? Help me out. Let me know. But like I said, knives like this are super traditional, extremely useful, classic, just as good as, they, as they've ever been. There's a lot of heritage. It's as American as apple pie. Carry one. Try it out. You know, I love, you know, if you're not, yeah, you got the, the high speed stuff. If you're in a hurry, you're in a rush, you know, whip that thing out. Even just like with a standard spider co that's not assisted. You know, you got the thumb hole. You can get it out there pretty quick. You know, OTFs, automatic, stuff like that. You know, in and out real quick. Do what you got, do what you got to do. This, slow down a bit. Take your time. Enjoy it. Think about what you're doing, the work that you're doing. Then when you're done, close it. Back in the pocket it goes. And it'll be there every time you need it. That's the Buck 310 Limited Edition Whittler from everything I know. Let me know what you guys know. I'll be looking forward to see the comments below. Appreciate you guys watching. We'll see you on the next one.